I'm actually having a little bit of a hard time doing this segment. I thought it would be so easy. I thought I'm just going to get on. I'm going to talk about the bad things and the good things about living in a small home. And we're going to go from there. But I don't want to crush people's dreams with my reality. So I want you to take the suggestions or the things that I'm saying as just my experience. And if you learn something from them, then, then you do. But living in a small house is totally different than living in a medium or a bigger house. There are some really hard choices that you have to make when you're living in a small house. You're going to hear my chickens. You just are, because I'm outside. When we chose to move here, like I said before, I've said often, this was our three-year plan. We were going to move on the land and we put a single wide manufactured trailer home. My husband made the mistake of calling me trailer trash once. He just called that once. <laughs> he was joking, people, he was joking. But this was our three-year plan. We were putting this um, cottage on the land and then we were going to build our forever home on the upper part of the land and we were going to use the cottage as the office place where we we take care of things um, i am a permaculturist what we wanted to do on this two acres that we live on was to plant it and design it in a way where it would produce as much food for us as possible while creating a relaxing garden-like environment for us. I spend the majority of my time outside. I love outside. I don't, I don't necessarily like being cooped up in, in a house, even if it's a big home. I don't like being cooped up in it. So when we moved here, we were moving from Central California. Woohoo, Fresno, we were in the new. Um, Yes, I just did that on camera, and I am going to be uploading that. And we have a cat that is trying to scratch the post. Um, anyways, so we were using, we were taking what we thought, how we thought living was from down there, and we were going to be moving it up here. And that was our first mistake. One, the weather, it rains 55 to 80 inches a year here. And we thought it rained mostly at night, and that's not always the case. We can go for 28 plus days with absolutely rain all the time. Um, that is not uncommon. We also would lose electricity here a lot more than we do in California if you take out the rolling blackouts. If you don't know what a rolling blackout is, um, you're blessed. Just consider yourself blessed. So I guess, I mean, when we're going for five days without power, that takes an adjustment. Now, the good thing about a small home is if you have no power, a couple candles in your house and you've literally lit that house and warmed it up. The bad news is, is that you have no place else to go. I mean, you're just stuck there and no electricity, no nothing. A plum. We'll check it when we leave. So we have in our, our the deal was three years, and after three years we would have gotten the garden set up, and we were going to move to make, build the forever home. Things happened. We had massive setbacks, as anybody that is working on a homestead is going to have. Your plans are not going to be the reality. I'm just gonna say that. But don't stop working on your plans because your plans are amazing and you will get there, but you just have to keep working. So we had some massive setbacks, major setbacks, and we just decided we were gonna stop and pay all of our debt off, including the land and the house. Everything was gonna be paid off. And then we were gonna see what we thought. We did that a couple years ago and we sat down and we're like, we're happy living the way we're living. So we lived nine years in a 698 square foot home. Now, here's the drawbacks. People would tell you, oh, you only have one bathroom to clean. Yeah, 
I only have one bathroom to clean. But what you don't hear is the pitter-pattering of my dance about four or five times a week because I have to go to the bathroom so bad and my husband is in the bathroom. Now, women don't have to worry. Men don't have to worry about that because women have been trained by the children at a very early age in their world that they go in, do their business, and get out. Men like to camp. Camping with one bathroom doesn't really work. I have thought about building an outhouse. I have plans for building an outhouse. I have the design. I have the location where I want to build the outhouse. I'm sure there's even a YouTube video on building an outhouse. Literally, I am sure there is a YouTube video. There's a YouTube video for everything. I haven't built it though. I have considered on copping a squat at a tree in which tree I was gonna do it at, but I haven't gotten that far yet. And living in a small home, when there is stink coming from someplace, there is stink all over the house. So if you forget to turn the fan on and all of a sudden the stink is going to come, honey, your whole house is going to smell. Sounds so romantic, living in a small house with the man that you love. Yeah. Until he forgets to turn the fan on in the restroom. Then it's not so romantic. Small house living. We smell everything together, including when I burn food. It does happen. Oh, and did you know that when you burn food in a small kitchen, that your smoke alarm that is in your living room goes off when you burn a simple tiny square on a piece of toast? Yep, every time. That's stuff that we can all do and change, right? That's all changeable. But when you're trying to clean the house, I'll show you some videos, some funny things. But you just... It must be so easy to clean your house. You are so lucky you don't have a big house to clean. We're in the middle of tomato harvest season. My clean house consists of buckets of cherry tomatoes and buckets of cherry tomatoes and tomatoes sitting on the counter while they ripen. Literally, I'll have tomatoes on my counter for weeks and while I'm processing. And we just had egg collection. So I'll have those on until I get ready to process them. Yeah. My kitchen looks so clean. Not. Let's not forget to mention tomato season also comes at the same exact time that Apple harvest season comes. So, apple, apple, there's another container over there of apples. And it also happens to come at the same exact time that pepper harvest seasoning comes. So, I have little piles that my husband gets of peppers when he harvests them. Yes, it's so easy to keep this house clean very. No. 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 I probably should show you the jars that need to go upstairs, but should I really take them upstairs? Because I may be canning tomatoes in a couple weeks or days or whatever. So, yes. I always have a collection of mason jars on my counter. Literally, always. Yeah, <laughs> really not easy to keep this house clean. In a perfect world, I would have a lot more storage space and a lot more cupboards that I could store all of this stuff in. Even when I had a smaller home or a slightly larger home, the garage was attached to the house and it was where I could store all of the empty containers or the empty jars or whatever. And that is pretty much impossible here because you get soaked, as you could tell, on the way up to taking care and getting, what fetching whatever I needed to fetch. So, it definitely is different. But you just can't clean a small house. In order to clean a small house, you have to be extremely minimalist. But because I live on the land and I have all of the, the produce that's coming in, I have to have ways of preserving it. 
I have two dehydrators, two pressure cookers, two water bath canners, three water bath canners, three water bath canners. And that all needs to be stored somewhere. Half of it is stored up in the shop, half of it's in the house. Mason jars, I have to have a plethora collection of mason jars and they're stored literally everywhere. Um, the rings, canning comes with a, a Canning comes with its own accoutrements. It's like a little baby. When you want to take a simple I take a simple item like you need more canning jars. In order for me to actually get more canning jars when I'm in the middle of canning, I have to walk out my front door, go down four steps, walk 50 feet. Mind you, it's pouring rain usually when I'm canning. I have to walk up 13 flights of stairs, 13 steps, not flights, 13 steps. Open the gate. Take out the keys. Fiddle with the lock. Step and open. garage, grab the item I need, garage. I'm klutzy, so I always have to pick up stuff I drop, and then we start the whole process over again, walking 20 feet back over, coming back, come on, dog always follows me, dog always needs to be told to come in. Come on, bottom. Wait because the dog wants to smell the flowers. Walk down the steps. <laughs> back to the front door, carrying whatever items I'm carrying. Back up the steps. Into the house and use the dog towel to dry off. Baby, when you want a pressure can, I'm watching, I'm watching a lot of birds and a cat chasing an animal over in the distance here. But when you wanna start canning, you're gonna need canning books, guidelines, um, you'll need the equipment, the rings, the lids, there's a lot of stuff that goes in with canning. Um, when you want to preserve food, press, um, food dehydrators, we have two food dehydrators because we have them both going at the same time. We are dehydrating peaches and strawberries and plums, um, and you're, we're dehydrating um, herbs, I, I, my oregano and my basil and my thyme, that comes from our garden. And yes, it is amazing, and it is a blessing to be able to do that. But it all takes space and time. So when I have company, and there is not a week that goes by that we are not having some sort of function in this location, which means it's really difficult to preserve food and keep the entertaining going. Guests. Where am I supposed to put a guest? I have a studio, I put a futon in it, but do you know how horrible I feel when I tell a, 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 a couple, a friend of ours, friends of ours, that yeah, they can come and use the studio anytime and then I have to preface it, but there's no toilet in the studio. So if you wanna go, if you wanna come stay here and in the middle of the night you need to use the restroom, you have to walk all the way up to, this, to the cottage and unlock the door and use the restroom. They're, they're scared about waking us up. Don't be scared about waking us up, it's okay. We love having company come over. And where are children going to sleep? We both have beautiful daughters and where do they sleep? I mean, where? Our grandchildren, where are our grandchildren going to sleep? These are all things that we needed to know, we should have thought of beforehand. And the biggest one for me, I think, is in the winter when it's really cold outside and it's raining. 
and you're trying so hard to to keep the momentum going to keep yourself going and all of a sudden you can't go outside you you need to go you want to go work the land or weed or something but you can't the only thing you basically can do is your book work and trying to um, organize something in the house and, and so that's when I save anything that can be done in the house is what I save for winter so I save all of that work in the winter everything that I've done all summer long um, all the organization where I've planted the plants I document all of that all winter long um, which means I'm sitting all winter long totally not pleasant so each winter I gain about 10 to 15 pounds because I can't go outside I can't get my exercise I can't get my heart rate up and you live in a small house which means you have in this house probably about a three by five square foot section 15 square feet of space that you can actually work out in which means I can't do yoga it's impossible to do yoga I've tried I can't do a lot of my stretching exercises so I run in place a lot I literally just run in place it's 26 steps from one side of the house to the other side of the house these are all things that that we need to be thinking about because when I lived in California I would get my clothes on get my shoes on and I'd run out the front door and I'd go for a two-mile run and I would come right home I would change my clothes and I'd go off and do my work I would weed my yard on clockwork every Friday and I would go run my errands on every Saturday whatever um, I had a schedule I can't have a schedule here because I have to work around the rain because I don't have the ability to store things in my shop without going and it, it's 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 drawn out you have to think about everything totally differently when you're living in a small home people giving you gifts that's really nice thank you very much I am touched when somebody wants to give me a gift but if it's not a consumable now I have to figure out where to put it and I don't have a cupboard that I can go and grab Aunt Martha's pitcher that she gave me to put on the table when Aunt Martha comes over I don't even have Aunt Martha coming over because hey full the cat loves to scratch this table tables I had to specially make that table that's in that house because nothing else fits. I can't go to a store and buy any kind of furniture to go into that place because it has to fit within a certain section of space. That couch that we bought, I hate the color red. 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 But that couch was the only couch in all of the couches that we have searched in that fit that space and fit us. We can't gain any more weight because we won't fit in that couch. Usually when we want to do any kind of book work or any kind of research, we have to sit at the dining room table. Um, it's all things you have to think about when you're moving into a small space. They're harder to clean, less space to move around, less space to move items when you're trying to clean. And when I want to reach for, for the quart size mason jars, I have to move the pint, I have to move the half pints, the pints, the four ounce jelly jars to get, I'm serious, all three of those have to move in order for me to get the fourth item. It's not an ideal situation. My way of living is totally different than this. This might be perfect for some people we are all built totally differently and for three years I could live like this I really could but I am the type of person that likes antique furniture my antique furniture is sitting in this room in this building here in our 200 square foot my studio um, I love love <clears throat> the antique furniture but I can't have it in the cottage because there's no room for it it's built too big so I had to specially make most of the furniture up there and then I had to go and get Billy bookcases which are just the perfect size to fit up there. So I can't have the furniture I like. I can't have the organization that I am good at. I like to have everything put away. Behind the cabinets, a space for everything and everything in a space. 
that is literally organization 101 everything has a space if you don't have room for it you get rid of it well what do I get rid of which canner do I get rid of which pressure cooker do I get rid of and then that would double my space that would double all of my work because now I have to wait for each batch and produce will go bad these are all things that you need to think about so if you're somebody that <clears throat> a frog in my throat if you are because I've been talking too much if you are somebody that doesn't like to have a lot of pets, that doesn't care about um, having books or things, then by all means, if, if you have a very minimalist life and you don't have children to come over and spend the night and you don't need an office, then a small house living might just be for you. It really might. But if you are somebody that has family, that has friends that you want to come and visit you, that craves the connection, loves to have dinner parties and game nights, has a lot of food to preserve, then small house living might not be for you. I think we should go and check and see if that is a plum on that tree. I'll show you. Now, right over in that tree, just above Maggie's ears is something yellow. Now when I check the harvest to see, this is the yellow egg plum tree that we have. Oh my goodness, we have plums. Sweet mother, let's go get them. We harvested Oh, look at my rose bush came back. I thought that thing died. We harvested all of the plums. Um, a couple weeks ago, and we didn't see any. But see, you can't see them when you're this when you're here. But looky there. Oh, they're rotten. Yeah. Ooh. Something was in them. Well, our loss Ooh, this one might still be good. It's got fruit flies really bad. Wow. Okay, so this is what we have. This one right here, I'm actually going to try. Um, we'll cut the bad stuff off. If you live on a homestead and you never eat bruised fruit, you'll go, you'll just starve. But this one right here, let's feed it to the chickens. I mean, living in a small house on a homestead, it is hard. It has its challenges. But then you meet the most wonderful cat in the world, Miss Vole. Yes. And you watch a rose bush that died come back to life. And your cocosmias are doing amazing. And your marshmallow plant is coming back. Are you following me? And your cats follow you. I miss having a cat in the house. Yes, baby. Let's go feed this to the chickens. We had to get... We had to... Oh, we have tomatoes coming too. We couldn't have cats in the house because we had no space, limited space for a litter box. So when our cats passed away a few years ago, we never got any new ones. And I do miss sitting on a cold, rainy day with a cat on your lap. Hello, girls. Yes, oh, the chase is on. I mean, oh, it must be good. We'll try this guy, see if it's good. Let's go get our book. Let's go get our book, babe. Hi, Max, what you doing? Daddy's almost on his way home. Those are acacia berries. They're really good. That's a Cox Orange Pippin Apple. And this is a pink lady apple. It was supposed to be a pink lady apple, but they're green. And I'm wondering, oh, nope, some of it's turning pink. And this is Mr. Mole. Hello, Mr. Mole. Hello, how are you? Yeah, he is a total love. Ideally, this is a hard way to live in a small home where you have to limit everything that you bring in. You have to second guess and everything has to do dual purpose. But then you have a nice day in between the rains. Trust me, it's been pouring the last week. 
you have a nice day in between the rains and you get to come out and video and talk to your friends and you get to um, find something magical that you didn't know you had in the garden. And it kind of makes up for everything. So you can go back in, cut this open, and tonight we'll experience the first golden egg plum. Kind of sounds like a million dollars, doesn't it? Sometimes it feels like that. So, small house living is different. Before I go in and call it a night here, I don't want to discourage you from small house living. I just want you to think about your lifestyle because you have to make some really tough choices and you say no to a lot and you really can't hold on to anything that's meaningful. It has to be purposeful. So you need to take that into consideration and your lifestyle. A small house, I lived in a thousand sixty square foot in Fresno, Central California, and that was that was easy and doable. But we weren't canning, we weren't homesteading, we weren't having massive produce coming in the house. And I had designed that whole kitchen myself so it could withstand anything you wanted to do in it. Um, you could totally do that in that kitchen. It also, though, didn't have a dining area, so I couldn't really entertain very much. But I didn't ever let that stop me because it didn't rain very much. So I had an outside dining that seated 22. So I'm talking massive dining for 22 people with a movie theater in my backyard when we were in California. Here, it doesn't get dark until about 10 o'clock in the summer, so you can't really do that. And you can't schedule events because you're not really sure if it's going to rain or not because Mother Nature pretty much makes her mind up at the last minute. So you may schedule something in advance and she may say, oh, I think I'm gonna cry today. And your whole event has to move inside somewhere. We tried doing some things in the shop, cleaning the shop up and having events in the shop, and that was just miserable for everybody. They seemed to have a nice time, but it was cold. So there are things to think about. For now, the way we live, our lifestyle here, it's doable and we're making do. But I can see in the future that we're going to want to change it. Because I frankly miss having all of my kids under one roof. I miss hearing the pitter-patter of them going to bathroom in the middle of the night, and I miss hearing them getting up early to go grab a cup of coffee or a glass of milk from the fridge. Those are all things, as a mom, you might want to consider when you're looking into a small house. We need to make a item for a friend of ours. You know, when you have a baby or whatever, I like to make um, something special, something just that, that they receive from us that's one of a kind. In order to do that, we have to go down 13 flights of stairs. 13 flights of stairs. Pass the chicken coop. Say hello to the chickens. Hello, chickens. <laughs> Walk through the garden. Check on it. Very nice. Oh, lovage is dying. We need to cut that back. It's a yearly thing it does. We probably should deadhead some flowers. Tables are doing nicely. We'll let our keys going into the studio. Would be nice if there we go. And this is where we would gather our items, find what we needed, and then we would haul it all upstairs. Because there's no electricity down here. So the only thing that I can do down here are crafts of some sort limited. We have our items, let's go. Oh, and I put the keys away. Why do I always do that? Again, just imagine if it's raining. And we go back up. Oh, and the dog always likes. I love the walk. I love the vegetation, the acacia berries. The orange cock pippins apples still have apples on them. Last year I didn't get any because I think it was a raccoon that ate them. Hello, Mr. Mole. Miss Miss Vole. Hello, Miss Vole. Everything is still looking good. Walk back through. I 
guess what I would have to say to most people is it appears easier, but it's really not. Easier would be a average sized home, everything in its place, clean line cabinets and adequate storage where you everything had a place and a home and you could maneuver in and around that. That would be ideal. I've done ideal, I've lived in ideal. This is an ideal. Thank you for talking to me and thank you for listening to my rambling. I'm going to go in, put this up so that you can see it and get ready to cut this because I just got a message that he is, my man is on his way home. You guys have a blessed day and whatever you do, make sure you do it heartily for the Lord and we'll see you later. Bye.